Well, I want to thank Pierre, first of all, for inviting me here. And uh, second of all, for giving me the opportunity to talk about the topic that I feel passionate about. My name is Anna Roisman, and what I do for the last five years is organizing conferences for software testing and test leadership. And uh, I kind of, I don't consider it test leadership, I kind of consider it IT leadership for the reason that we are all in it together. And uh, I don't believe that um, testing profession can kind of uh, survive on its own unless it's really supported by everyone, by the whole team, by the whole organization. So a lot of things that I do for a living is I advocate for quality. And my conferences and my talks and um, my webinars, everything that I do is around advocating for quality. And I feel, I, or I feel that this topic is really urgent in, in new technologies. So with like, you, you could do testing, you, your users could do testing for you in a kind of like previous times, but very soon that's not gonna be um, an option anymore. And uh, the reason it's not gonna be an option is that the quality of technology will really affect human quality of life. And because of that, uh, technology is integrated so much into the quality of life of humans. It's going to happen sooner and like faster every year. I don't know if you're noticing how fast new technologies are conquering the market. It happens really fast for the last several years and uh, I think it accelerates. So um, my request for Pierre is to play the video that I sent to him and then we'll talk. Here. Okay, you can, can you listen? Yes. Let's go. Changes. Changes. Smooth it. Making smoothie. Calendar. No meetings today. Remember, come at 9.30. Fire off. Fire off. Open door. Door open. Som. So, ska we set the ante? Fire Open door. Run voice command. Open door. Run voice command. Open. Open door. Repeat back. Open door. I didn't understand that. Hey, open door. Play on the floor. Open the floor. Open the floor. Open the door. 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 Open the <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay. Okay, and um I'll continue from that. Um Hold on. No, you should stop, you should stop, you should stop because we're gonna talk. And thank you so much. And I'm gonna share my screen now. And we can take it from here. Um, so the big thing that I want to talk about is the test leadership of the future, new challenges and big opportunities. And when I say test leadership, I really, my message is really to the tech leaders of today and tomorrow. As I mentioned before, test leadership to me is not something that the testing professional should own. I believe this is uh, a mindset that um, like really you need to educate uh, all the IT leaders and um, 
everybody who is coaching IT leaders and uh, the agile community that Pierre just um, gathered here is really uh, the recipients of this message because you guys are leading uh, the leaders. This is how I, uh, I understand who the agile community is. Uh, really the agile coaches and people who I met throughout the years, I would say I started speaking at the conferences 2011-ish and I spoke at agile conference several times and uh, other testing conferences which are kind of agile related. So uh, I spoke at uh, booster conference. So I met a lot of people who are in agile leadership, agile coaching. And I believe those people are kind of really shaping the future of our IT profession. So this message is for you. Um, uh, a little bit about myself. Uh, I did found the Global Quality Leadership Institute. I found Test Masters Academy and Test Masters Academy is, uh, to me, it's kind of an educational initiative which uh, runs the conferences and where I grow leaders as well. To me, leadership is something that uh, is something that is necessary in in like the upcoming years. Um, I don't believe in people who are like in the corner kind of doing their like little work. This is no longer the case for the new uh, like reality that we are in. Software development becomes a team sport. And as such, it needs, uh, everybody has to kind of be a, uh, in line with like the big picture vision. And this is something that I try to promote through gathering the leaders in my conferences. One of the conferences specifically for leaders, I call it Test Leadership Congress. And this is where I educate people about today and tomorrow and the challenges of tomorrow. Also the opportunities as well, because I feel it's very exciting to be in where we are today. Uh, I've been uh, in several associations. I was holding different uh, positions in uh, software testing associations. And uh, this is what like this um, thing is listing. Um, I was the president of the Quality Leaders SIG in 2012, 2014. So uh, there has been a lot of um, exposure. I would say I had a lot of exposure to a lot of people who are passionate about quality and also who developed the, um, the profession itself, uh, the craft, they develop in the craft because uh, the software testing as a craft is something new. Um, we used to have, um, it was kind of like, um, I would say it was like waves. Uh, there was at some point the engineering department took over and engineers were also ex um, experimenters. So it was more of a scientific approach because when you have a scientist, if you have a scientist who develops the um, uh, hypothesis, then he introduces the scientific approach to prove his hypothesis. And that's exactly what testing is. It's a scientific approach to prove certain hypotheses. Uh, at some point it kind of became something else, but uh, we in software testing community believe that software testing is an art and a craft. And it's really a, a science in a, in a way that, we, we should not make it something smaller. It should be really open to scrutiny and it really should have a high standard. So software testing to me is something that has been developed and it should be developed in line with the scientific standards. Um, how any science is being developed and how any scientific approach is being um, accepted by, you know, by people who call themselves like software testers, they should accept a scientific approach to their methods. So um, um, what we have seen in the last few years, uh, we have few things that are being transformed and very rapidly. And technology is being transformed really rapidly. It become more and more complex it become more integrated in our daily life. 
I believe all of you have smart something by this time, whether it's uh, Google Voice, where it's Alexa, where it's home, smart home, anything else. Everything's being smart and everywhere you see new technologies that are being integrated into our live experiences. So if yesterday uh, you had to buy the ticket by going like uh, travel ticket, by going to travel agent or maybe calling the travel agent, today you're going to, um, um, today you're going to the web and tomorrow the web is coming to you right uh with your smartphone with um the context advertisement that kind of like looking at what you're looking for it starts suggesting something for you and it becomes it it's offering so instead of uh, you coming to search it starts offering something to you based on your previous research so it can send you something like oh you're ready for your next vacation here you go um so obviously the um experiences our lifestyle and our life experiences are being uh, heavily affected by technology as of today and imagine what's going to happen tomorrow um interactions as i mentioned the interactions uh, and we just saw the video and I, I really love this video because uh this is the video that i use in training purposes when i brainstorm with my um groups on uh, what new challenges the new technology is introducing. And obviously the first new challenge is the voice recognition, right? Um, what if What is happening when you cannot really integrate with technology in the way that you usually integrate? For example, you have an accent. Uh, for example, this technology doesn't understand certain languages. Um, this person got... Um, distorted <laughs> his mouth was distorted by the uh, doctor and um, all of a sudden technology failed in recognizing his needs um, we also have the opportunities which are really limitless because um, even though um, some of the experiences may be unpleasant but some other experiences are too pleasant to pass and I believe all of us, even, and I'm seeing some of you are younger and some of you are my age and I'm 50 something. And uh, uh, technology didn't come to me um, naturally. To my daughter it is. You know, when she was born, she was already playing on her gadgets. It's not the case with me, but still, I'm, and I'm conservative. Um, one of the, you know, I'm not the um, person who adapts new technology easily. I'm a very conservative person, but still, uh, it's becoming a necessity. And uh, the technology is supposedly designed to make our life easier. So um, we ha kind of need to adjust to it, but also we not uh, should we should not be passive about how the technology interacts with our life. And um, through something um i would say through my activities and i do research a lot because i'm i'm running the conferences so i need to understand what's hot today what's the trends of tomorrow i'm seeing that another um i'm gathering this um information from different sources that something uh else is transforming as much as technology is and what is transforming the team the teamwork becomes the new reality of today how it um, departments are working they are no longer like you don't see hierarchies anymore um, you don't have a manager who kind of tells you what to do and you are in agile field you know it so well how agile is taking technology and IT industry by storm. Um, really, I, I've seen, um, I, I think that Agile become mainstream around 2010, 29, 2009. Uh, I think it kind of got introduced around like 2001 and in 10 years it became the mainstream. And if you look at, uh, if you talk to, uh, you know, technology teams today and you ask them about Agile, nobody kind of, nobody can say anymore that they don't know what it is. 
some people <laughs> think they know pretty well what it is and that's why uh, what Pierre has mentioned that there has been a lot of uh, discussions and um, maybe conflicts uh, what's, the, uh, what's agile is or isn't but in any case the self-organizing team is what's behind the agile um, process, right? Uh, this cannot be removed. So self-organizing team, what does it mean? Um, self-organizing team means that there is no external motivation. All the motivation comes from within. All the team members uh, really need to motivate each other, right? And they should be... Um, developing processes and those processes can be really very specific to this team that those processes should satisfy how the team works right they should select the tools that are relevant for them for their work they should introduce the skills and uh, introduce the team members who have those skills that are necessary for their development and their deliveries right and those are pretty much becoming um there is no cookie cutter anymore those all of those things are really um very specific to the teamwork and the team when they self-organize they have to be aware of their process and what kind of skills they need what kind of tools they need and how to keep the motivation to deliver something that everybody is happy about. Um, what I'm noticing is the um, team is becoming a, a body. So it's, it's a one integrated entity that has an opinion, it has a vision, and it has, um, how to say, cohesiveness of working together. Um, what I'm seeing in such team is the expertise is welcome. Uh, whatever expertise you bring to the team, it's really appreciated and uh, it's really been used. What I've seen before, there was a lot of kind of, um, people did not trust each other expertise and I'm not seeing it the case anymore. So, and I'm looking through my uh, lenses kind of where my industry is, but I'm seeing how test are integrated in the team and this is what I hear from the trenches so it's obviously something that affecting everyone um, opinion is welcome um, no longer you have a manager who tells you what to do how to do uh, people discuss right people coming together and they discuss they have opinions uh, they welcome each other opinions you don't want to introduce group sync so uh, you really uh, trust everybody having their opinion and their expertise and uh, the trust is something that is happening within the team where they um, rely on each other's kind of um, integrity in making this work something that everybody's proud of. Decision making is owned. So um, again, I keep on telling about this manager thing, but what I'm noticing is managers in agile DevOps environments becoming more coaches and uh, people who develop um, kind of people development, uh, they have a people development role. They no longer um, tell you what to do, but they can look at your career development, they can coach you, and this is something that the manager becomes. So decision-making, instead of coming to um, coming from above, it happens from behind, uh, from, from the bottom, and uh, the whole team is owning the decision-making and stands by the decision that they made. Um, coaching and support for each other becomes the norm. As I said, coaching from the management who are now kind of leadership, they are more leadership role and people development role, but also coaching and support within the team is something that have, becomes the new norm as well. And uh, last but not least, the quality evangelism. So the team, when they work together as an entity, they need to have a vision of what quality means and they have to promote this quality vision to people outside within within the team outside the team to the organization and uh, 
it should be part of how they develop their products. So this is the trend I'm seeing, um, real, which is really happening right now. And I don't know if technology has to do with it or not, or maybe Agile actually succeeding in, <laughs> in transforming how we do work, but I'm definitely seeing those as a trend. Um, so we seen uh, two kind of, and what I did is I combined the um, transforming entities and kind of see what is the trend, what, what's coming out of it um, as a whole, right, as a big picture. And what I'm seeing really in the team development is um, it's a decision making, human decision making becoming the new norm. Uh, it's no longer coming from outside, but it's within the team. The humans make decisions on how certain things should be working, how they should be developed, and how they should be perceived by outside world. On the other hand, within technology development, I'm also seeing that there are a lot of autonomous machines, decision making is also happening. And it's being introduced by autonomous cars, um, artificial intelligence, um, smart, whatever it's smart, IoT devices, then we have, uh, I think a lot of, we start hearing more and more how the, um, um, you know, like your smart refrigerator working with your smart, uh, uh, I don't know, swiper or something. <laughs> and uh, with smart, um, uh, you know, your smart refrigerator is kind of like taking care of what you eat and looking at your healthy food. And uh, a lot of autonomous machine decision making is also becoming part of our reality. Machines de uh, decide for us. Uh, what we see in artificial intelligence is a lot of context. Uh, and, uh, you know, there is a lot of scandals around that thing and the ethical issues around the artificial intelligence. But... Uh, reality is that uh, artificial intelligence becomes part of our lives is that it uh, really drives um, our um, advertisements whatever we get introduced you know like um, news right uh, it looks at our interest and then kind of pushes something to us which think that it's on our interest and that's how it like frames our opinions right um, so uh, that's on the rise as well. So there is two kind of growing trends, which is one, people take uh, responsibility for their actions. On the other hand, machines take control of their um, decisions as well. And um, where would that lead us? Uh, to me, the complexity, I see in it as exponential thing, for example, and I'm going to reiterate it a little bit more, but I think the complexity will, we have to be, um, we have to accept that, uh, that everything, our world becomes more and more complex because uh, everything integrates now. Every IoT device has artificial intelligence inside it. You probably don't know, but it does, it does happen. So artificial intelligence is now in our Gmail. You don't know, but it's there. <laughs> a lot of tools that we use have already some bots and artificial intelligence um, functionality um, pushed in. Sometimes it's not really being announced, but it's there. It's there. And we should be looking at um, how we're going to own it. Uh, that new technology and how it, uh, how this new technology gonna transform our life, but how we also have to own our life experiences to ourselves. Um, we looking at a lot of challenges right now. Is it true or is it not? Um, and uh, my, uh, I know, I don't know if you all uh, look at this um, uh, new. Uh, serious i think it went like a couple of years ago it called west world and uh one of the uh, interesting characters there who is no longer there but she was in the first season is the qa manager she's 
is really a QA manager of the future. And uh, I think what the scenarios, like the people who wrote this scenario kind of brainstorm of how this is gonna look with the new technology of the future. She's really, um, this person is really a decision making um, of people experience. So what is happening in the quality assurance, and this is why I said that it's, uh, this um, trend is really transforming, is that quality assurance of the future is not gonna be quality assurance of today. Because quality assurance of the future will be uh, more around people's experience and people life quality than it is today. Today it's about, you know, like you have usability, you kind of have the application that need you need to like, otherwise you're not gonna use it, right? This is this is the quality assurance of today. The uh, the application should kind of work for you. If it's bugs, some of them are acceptable. We all know that there is no bug free software, so some bugs are acceptable, some are not. But in reality, you know, you can shut down this application, go to another application, and you find it, right? In the future, um, the West world is, uh, if you don't know what uh, this whole setup uh, is, is the um, amusement park of tomorrow where you have uh, artificial intelligence robots uh, who are, um, uh, they kind of playing characters for you and it's like a resort. So you come in and you experience some wild west and all the people around you are actually, if they are not tourists, they're robots. Um, they're kind of androids. And uh, the, um, uh, the um, responsibility of QA managers is to look after people experience, the tourist experience within this amusement park and to see if their experience is not life threatening. Um, so um, here, everyday work of uh, tomorrow is on the left. There's this person, uh, she's looking at there are some reports. She's talking to somebody and uh, there are some reports that person observing some behavior of some robots. In the center, those are actually robots sitting there, pretty, very pretty girl in a green dress. She's a robot. And uh, this uh, QA manager is kind of looking at her behavior and discusses some of the behavior. She, it's, it's a testing lab. So she, she's discussing her behavior with the developer. On the bottom, it's actually a developer. He, she's always talking with developer and they're looking at the behavior of those robots and they keep on discussing like, look, this is the traits this robot um, produced today. Look, is it threatening? Should we shut down the robot or not? And um, uh, you see here with the, like, this is really um, a crime drama, actually, <laughs> because <laughs> there are some sinister peoples. And uh, uh, she has to take something into action. Uh, so um, this is her team. And this this is very interesting. This is very interesting development. Hue team is really out there to uh, protect the humans from the robots. So a lot of things that these people do, they become like rangers. So they are no longer like those uh, people who are sitting and testing in uh, in a cubicle. They have in, like the rifles and they have to shut down the robots before they introduce harm to the people. And I really want to, for you to pay attention to something like that, because this is really where we are going, uh, believe it or not, that, that that's where we are going. At some point, if, if the human lives depend on the robot so much, you need to interfere in time um, to uh, shut down the unpleasant experience and save the life of a human. Um, so, um, when we talk about the future, and this is something I want to um, uh, emphasize, is uh, we need to be in it together, uh, number one. We have to understand that autonomous technology uh, is really affecting the lives of human uh, humanity. And uh, to me, the message that I have for everyone, specifically for the leaders like you, IT leaders like you, is that we all have to be aware of uh, the new challenges that actually need 
uh, new waves of thinking. Uh, we, we should be brainstorming about the risks. We should be aware of the risk and risk is something that it's not really, you don't have a cheat sheet of like, oh, let's do this, this and this and we're fine. You have to really um, brainstorm about potential risks of um, integrating people and technology. And when we talk about the risks, you should be introducing um, the concept of the complexity, meaning that it's not one application that you're dealing with. Even if you're working for a company which develops one application, as soon as it comes to the um, to people, to the customers, uh, your application is going to be integrated with a lot of different applications. And uh, the experience that we should anticipate and the risk we should anticipate have to be including um, the notions of embedded and um, integrating technology, which sometimes they don't know that they're integrating, but they will, right? Um, in, in, for example, you have a phone, right? Uh, you have your Gmail, you have your voice recognition, you have your um, web surfing, you have your calendar there, you have your uh, to-do list, you have um, some intimate things, that the phone knows about you, believe it or not, but they do, because uh, they record everything, <laughs> you know. Um, you, you'll see by the context advertisement that they know much more about what you talk about than you think they are. And um, when different technologies, for example, integrate on that smartphone, uh, oftentimes you need to restart it. Uh, and oftentimes it becomes a, a burden when this smartphone is actually becomes your uh, working tool. For example, a lot of people, uh, I know the freelancers, they work offline, online and they communicate. So communication becomes like the necessity of the future. And imagine if that technology, uh, you have something new version, <laughs> which is on top of another version and all of a sudden your Gmail is not opening. But yes, I've experienced that too. And uh, I am, uh, you know, I am a software tester, meaning that I kind of understand that I need to troubleshoot and I kind of need, I kind of understand where to go for information. But imagine I'm, that's my profession. What about all the customers that um, are right now going to be using all this new technology. They're not that educated as we are. We are obviously technology people. So we know a little bit more than um, every day, like ev every other person on the, in the planet. But uh, it seems that the technology education of the humanity needs to also happen because we do a lot of troubleshooting. I don't know how you, I, I don't think I'm a bug magnet. I think I'm a regular person. There is a lot of bugs out there. <laughs> there is a lot of technology bugs and they're gonna be more. So I think that my message to um, uh, people who are leaders is uh, to kind of grow and um, uh, focus on several several um, things and several kind of, um, um, several topics which I think need development and they need um, education. I think for all IT leadership, uh, this uh, principles, which I call the eight principle of modern quality leader, which notice I didn't call it test leader because I think the quality leader is becoming a broader thing than it used to be like this quality assurance or testing of the past. Uh, modern quality leader is the modern IT leader and this is how we can be prepared for the future. So um, I mentioned a lot of things here and uh, the very first one is empathy. I believe that empathy is Otherwise, it's it's not possible to uh, think about all the risks. You really have to care about your customer. Actually, you have to care about your business as well. 
but the customer, your team and your community is something that you, you know, you have to be aware and you have to emphasize with their experiences as well. Um, we have to share ideas. I think it becomes really important uh, to have different conferences, um, events like this, sharing our experiences and ideas is really necessar necessary in like our age because um, we have a lot of different say units of um, wisdom units of wisdom <laughs> every team is a unit of wisdom every community is i think we need to share much more and can contribute to collective body of knowledge and analyze and have a reflection of our experiences as well um i think we have to do a lot more coaching uh hands-on practice because for example i don't know how any other professions but i know that um in agile uh, coaching in agile is a lot through play through practice so you have to understand new concepts through practice and i believe that gamification of all coaching is something that i um, helps spread the ideas and the new concepts and it's coincidentally that we met with pierre at the play 14 which we had like three days of game playing <laughs> And it was fantastic experience because that's how today, uh, in today's world, this is how you learn. So I think the coaching should become, it's already very important. And I think that it will be more and more important that lectures are no longer suffice for understanding of new realities. I believe that everybody should have a big picture thinking and critical mindset. You really need to have a system thinking and this is something that should be developed within all leadership. Um, you should be influencing, you should know how to influence other people. And um, uh, research, I think that we should have uh, to do a lot of research. With all those new technologies, we kind of need to understand what those risks are. And I think uh, you cannot just do it in the brain. You do, you need to do some trial and errors. You have some, you should have some labs to see how those little things interact with each other. And uh, are they safe for humans? Um, I believe that's my um, quality advocacy. Um, as I said, quality advocacy is not something that belongs to somebody's profession. It belongs to the team. The quality advocacy is something that the team does. And uh, my the last point is the responsibility. I think we should all be responsible for our quality of life of tomorrow. And uh, maybe that too. We need to learn how to <laughs> shoot down those robots. <laughs> That's um, awesome. awesome. <laughs> uh, you, you know what? You're challenging my way. I had a lot of ideas. I don't know how uh, you're on the audience. Um, as an agile coach, I do mostly organization development. And I discover that we have a lot of things in common. And maybe you're, you're starting to give some kind of roots to even to uh, um, analyze the quality of of a coach work because a lot of let's say you have a lot of bad agile coaches to just come and to sell a methodology which i consider as uh, colonization and here is more <laughs> like you have to believe in assimilation which is <laughs> what you're saying is about it's is a system of people and and bringing people speaking together is not an easy thing because you have all your we have our let's say or cultural gaps, errors, or bugs coming from who we grow up, where we learn things. And that's a shift. And, and the point, yes, so I'm thinking now, now based on this, I have to think about how I can test custom experience, how I can test service experience, yeah. how I can test a people experience, how I can test organizational experience, and how can I test enterprise experience. Sweet. Yeah, I I think we are kind of getting into this, <laughs> you know, scientific mentality 
that uh, we have to test much more than we do today. Yeah. And what you mentioned is totally in line with that. Yeah. Rachel, I'm sure you get to, you have a question. I can see it in your eyes. <laughs> You're on mute. I couldn't find my unmute button. Um, gosh, I just, I've got, I actually, it's like I've got a lot kind of rolling around in my head. Um, it's like I actually came up in product development. It's like actually through the testing, through the testing side of things and of, of product development. And so um, it's, again, it's like this is just one of the most relevant conversations that, I, that I've heard in a really long time. And um, Thank you. You know, well, it's because like, what you're pointing out is that, I, you know, I mean, the, the way of the world of testing, right, which is literally, it's been software testing. It's right. It's, it, that's right. It's, it's been, you know, it's like, you know, classically. And it's still, at least in my, my world, um, it, you know, it's like that's still very much where, you know, it's just like, it's like kind of where the, 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 the thought, you know, still is. And so the questions in my mind is, you know, because I, I deal with current state. Okay. And way back in the olden days, right, it's just like testing, it's like testing was really handled, I mean, really as a true discipline, right? And there were things like a CSTE, you know, I mean, there were some fairly like rigorous um, certifications and, and things like that, that as that, that I felt really helped support um, career testers, right? You know, it's, you know, it's like people, you know, it's like that there were some things that people could learn on their own or they could pursue that actually gave them a pretty good, you know, foundational understanding of testing. Okay. The one thing that I have seen, it's just like with, with the whole agile, you know, with the whole agile change, and I've been, in, I've been in the middle of all this is that, um, you know, it's just like one of the biggest things that I'm seeing in, in my day to day life is that I've got testers, I've got people that show up that identify, it's like identify as testers. And my reality is, is that I don't have folks with these titles that actually have what I consider to be core competencies in the most, you know, in the, in the most basic, right? It's like of, of, of quality, quality, uh, quality assurance. Um, you know, it's like practices. And, um, you know, it's like I spent a lot of my time literally coaching up, again, just those really basic things. Like the old school, you said it's like, what's regression testing and what's performance testing, right? And all those things, which I recognize because I, I spend a lot of my time in the data, data and analytics space, right? And so these, it's like, so a lot of these concepts, it's like, they don't really, they're not fitting, you know, it's just like in the, the, in the data space. And you've brought, it's like, and you're bringing in like the internet of things, which I would I would love to get into those technologies, but I'm just kind of stuck. And my question for you is, um, you know, it's like, it's, it's like, it's, is there, it's like, is there a more modern path? Do you, it's like, do you see a little bit more of a, of a more modern path that folks can kind of be put, can put down in order to actually start modernizing? It's just like, they're, it's like, they're it just, their quality mindset, right? Their testing skills are one thing, but, um, you know, just having a quality mindset, you know, one of my first, one of my first comments, the notes that I took was, how in the world do we still have leaders that are not quality minded, right? This has been a problem <laughs> since, you know, it's like, how do we keep promoting these people? How do they keep persisting? I mean, gee, how do we change this? Do they just have to die out? I don't know. <laughs> I, I've been... <laughs> <laughs> I've been struggling with it for many years. And uh, one, one of the first challenges that I had uh, when I became a quality manager or test manager is like, how do I persuade my management that certain things are important? That's uh, uh, it was a challenge. And uh, one of the things that in our industry, what we do within our community is like teach people how to talk. Mm -hmm. how to talk about their experiences, how to talk about their value, because uh, it was an, a non-existent. When, when we had, as I say, when we had like QA departments, nobody cared. The UK QA departments and they know what they're doing. We don't know what they're doing. And mm -hmm. all of a sudden, Agile got introduced and, oh, we don't need any specialists at all. Oh, by the way, we need some specialists. That's so we bring them back. <laughs> yeah, I, I think it, it becomes the struggle. And this is the reason I choose the path that I like, I'm doing right now is to educate, educate, educate. Right. It's in education. And, and connections, you know, like I'm, I'm really happy that I'm talking to you guys 
because you're not within my community, but I really love to bring, build bridges on different communities because we need all people perspectives. Right. Otherwise they say, oh, you testers, what do you know? Right. <laughs> yeah, so I hope with your help, we can do more, you know, with everybody is. You can, you just have to, you just have to find the, uh, you just got to find the willing, you know, and I think what's, what's been really interesting is that, um, you know, it's like before Agile, right, it's, it's like there was that separation, right, it's like QC, right, it's like, there, it's like, there are even fights around what's QC, you know, quality control versus quality assurance, yeah. right, and all those things, you know, which I still think is very, very valid, you know, um, I, you know, I, it's like, I will still say that I think calling testing, referring to testing as QA versus QC, that actually sets you off because one is prevention and one is detection, right? And it's like, it's about that proactivity, right? Not, and I think that that's the stuff, you know, that, that Agile is, has done, it, you know, at least has fundamentally changed for the better, right? It's like, is getting out of, it's like, is helping people move away from testing as gatekeeping, right? Mm -hmm. Preventing release, right? And it's like, and, and flipping around, it's just like, and, and training them up to be uh, proactive, right? And actually assisting in getting stuff done, right? Versus, you know, gatekeeping and try, you know, it's like an acting as that, as, as, a, as a you know as a as a force to protect to protect you know a company from themselves you know um but you know the thing that i'm wondering and it's like i know it's again it's like i just i love the technologies that you're work that, that you're talking about is that just due to the nature of the technologies right when you're doing ai when you're doing analytics right again you know when you're really it's like you know data work is technical work right um and, you know, especially when you're in data pipelines, right, you're really, you know, talking about, you know, kind of the back end of things. Um, you know, it's just what I think, what at least what I'm seeing an opportunity for is that the, the, the testing is becoming, is technically becoming more and more technical, right? And um, so, it, it, it's both. It's both. And I thank you so much for mentioning the data analytics because that's where the evil is. So uh, artificial intelligence, uh, what's really artificial intelligence? So you have the algorithm, you, you have the, um, the network which you teach in how to behave. Mm -hmm. Meaning, and you teaching it through the testing data sets. So basically the data you push in into uh, the, uh, that machine, is something that it's gonna be made, making decisions of. This is how it's learning its behavior. So uh, developing testing, right testing data sets is necessary to feed the machine the right ideas. Right. For example, we just recently had this uh, in Amazon. That, in Amazon, there was an algorithm that uh, predicted the success of the new candidate on a job and they use it in HR department. And what happened is that they feed the Amazon data to it. Mm -hmm. And Amazon uh, using its own data uh, predicted that they succeed, like the success of a new candidate would be if he's a male. And, and uh, it's not that the algorithm is wrong. It's just the data supporting that decision was fed into the algorithm. So there was, uh, it, it's, it's something that all of us need to be aware of, is that the artificial intelligence, the way you train it, the way it's going to behave. So the data sets become like uh, analytics. I think it's the profession of the future, because you really need to understand what exactly are you feeding this machine. Right. You know, well, so I, I yeah. Well, it's like in that, you know, I guess that that's, that that's kind of the, the gap that I'm seeing is that, um, you know, data, uh, you, well, again, it's like if you've, if you've worked in the, the data side of things, right, I mean, it's like you, it's, you would have to have such stringent controls over your data sets, right, because you have to really, really understand, right, that's always been the thing, is like you have to yep. really, really understand the data in which you're testing with, right? Absolutely. Yep. And so, you know, and again, I mean, it's like when I just think about the level of analysis, the level of understanding, I mean, it's just, it just, it gets, it just really kind of gets overwhelming, you know, because I don't think as people, you know, I don't think as people, we don't have the capacity, I mean, to really understand these really huge, when you get into like the, the big data, right, the big data, you know, stuff, and, um, 
you know, and again, it's like, I, I, I appreciate that, that you, you see the enormity there as well. It's like, I just have no ideas right now. It's like on how to, on how to help yeah. it. I, I, I agree that everybody needs to become more technical, but on the other hand, everybody needs to kind of see big picture as well. Like to kind of understand the concept behind, uh, you know, that technology. Mm -hmm. Because, for example, for me, uh, learning about this artificial intelligence, how and I educated myself because I want to educate my community on how it works, because um, that's really becoming our future. As I, as I mentioned, artificial intelligence are in the application that you use every day. You may not be aware of it. And sometimes they don't advertise it, by the way. They just don't want to. And uh, it's kind of funny. Uh, three years ago in 2017, um, I wanted to um, bring some people who can teach the artificial intelligence concepts to my community in my conference. And I started searching. So I went to somebody who's doing the meetup and obviously it's something very hot, artificial intelligence so hot. And um, <coughs> I asked him, like, can I advertise within your community? Of, it's, a, it's a meetup in New York on artificial intelligence, 5,000 members. So I asked it, can I advertise and ask and somebody can teach? So what happens is uh, I got few people who responded back to me and some of them are working within companies, uh, big banks, retail and big banks. And those are using artificial intelligence. Nobody knows about that. It, it's so funny. It's like they already have those departments. Uh, the number one, they, it's only development. They don't invite anybody else. And when I talked to this developer and I said, so who is developing your like testing data sets? It's like, we are. And I'm like, yeah, you are a developer, man. It's like, I, I have experience in those big banks and this in some of those larger enterprises that are using these things. Um, just because they're using the words and because they're using the technologies, right? I, you know, I've seen a lot of stuff that I really don't qualify as, re I mean, true value. You know, it's like, but a lot of what they're doing, it's like, it's not, they're doing some stuff, but it's not really, it's not really valued. It's yeah, not but it, value. yeah, but it's going to influence our lives and experiences, That's, you know. Um, <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not really sure because if you see also the big companies, which also I, I know a little bit, is the people are playing with robots without any idea about how the robots are behaving. It's just feeding robots like, like another robot and nobody is caring about it. It's like the video about the movie or the series you showed us is, yeah, that's the fact. So everybody, when Rachel say, everybody's talking about uh, inter, uh, inter, uh, AI and they have no clue about it. Yeah, that's the main problem. Well, it's yeah. the same thing as the Agile Transformation, right? The same company is like, oh yeah, we're, it's like we're, you know, we've, we've done Agile Transformation, we've done digital, now they're, now they're doing big data and they're all in AI, right? And machine learning. You know, that's where that went <laughs> yeah. into. Yeah, so yeah, so that's buzzwords. That's, that's the winning of the hand, right? That's the <laughs> I have yeah, I, I, I think that agile coaches need to introduce the ethics in technology as like a discipline or something like that. Because it, it's becoming really, really important. The ethics. Absolutely. Kind of, in, in the area which I'm living in now is, I'm living in Baden-Württemberg. So one of my big, I'm here because I, I work a lot with SAP and all these guys, which is, so the idea is SAP, of internet of things in the middle of the ERP system. I think from a strategic point of view, it makes sense as you have that system, but nobody has a clue of it. And everybody is speaking about service experience, ethics. But the problem is nobody has a clue about customer experience. So in Germany, when everyone is talking about digitalization, they're just speaking about digitization, which is Essex. And the problem is you have to think about both. So when, when I'm coming with my head, oh, you do a digitalized transformation. Oh, yes. And we make process optimization. Yeah, that's not digitalization. That's not digitalization. No, is what's happening there is, uh, mean, think about your customer can 
ask you for a service every second and you have to work with him. It's about hospitality. Are you good at that service? Oh, no, 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 we create services. Okay, you create page 209 in your 10,000 big catalog and expect that somebody is consuming your service. That's just wrong. <laughs> but this is the, the, the world we are, but we, we have to keep on track, like uh, people like you, Anna, like you, Rachel, and maybe a lot of people, which we I don't really know in our group, I know Ulysses, we are working all that area and we have to stick on the point because even robots need a, need a teacher. Oh, absolutely they do. And um, I think another trend, and I kind of didn't mention it, but um, last, year, uh, last year I had a conference and I had um, uh, Jason Huggins, who is the creator of Selenium. I hope you know what it is. Selenium is a, uh, is a tool embedded in a, uh, in a browser that can do automatic testing for you. So you basically configure the tool so it can do the automated testing on the web. And he's the creator of this Selenium tool. And now he's into robotics, meaning that he's uh, teaching the robots how to test. And uh, I think it's becoming, uh, it will become more of a trend. So I think a lot of like manual kind of repetitive testing is gonna go away. But on the other hand, somebody needs to train the robot. Another thing which is being, becoming a trend is the cobots and cobot is the collaborating robots. So again, this is something that people, so basically manual work will be replaced by uh, the person, um, um, uh, managing the robot. So even the new uh, new professions as they are today will be changed. So instead of somebody is digging the, uh, you know, the like building the house with their hands, there will be tools, but somebody needs to manage those tools. So you, and uh, again, the education you're, of... Again, you're speaking about uh, science fiction. That's Star Trek with the, no. nano, with the nanobots no. repairing no. The, the starship automatically. Yeah. No, no way, no way. It's uh, the cobots are the reality of today, and uh, you, you kind of need to watch those trends. It's happening. It's happening because it's uh, more efficient, and um, uh, a lot of automation is already happening in. Um, around the industry, different industries. We kind of like, because we are in software development, most of us, we kind of don't notice what's going on around us. <laughs> but <laughs> a lot of things are happening around us and a lot of those are uh, no longer science fiction. Uh, but the cobots is something which is happening today. Yeah, we already have uh, those samples that it's happening. So we, we have to be prepared to navigate the machine, to teach the machine how to work. And the human management of the machine is something I feel that we need to push kind of this notion and prepare for tomorrow. I think that's where the tomorrow is going to be happening. We need to be managing the machines and machine will be managing everything else. Yeah, <laughs> any, uh, any other questions in the audience? Amaranto. I, I mean, I, I, I come from such a different background, so um, but sure. it's, re it's, re it's so interesting for me because actually I studied AI 30 years ago and uh, oh, wow. yeah, a long, long time ago and, and then I, I actually became a Buddhist monk. So I, the, the whole, um, and I'm not a Buddhist monk now, but the whole sense of uh, ethics and, and AI has always been on my radar. So it's, it's, you know, and I work with leaders now in the tech industry and all of that. I was at SAP actually last year. And uh, so, um, you know, it's, it's, it's really interesting how the, how the fields are all coming together, you know, and how agile, you know, the whole sense of agile transformation and all these buzzwords that we use, but there's very little embodiment of it. And yet we're putting it into robots, which are now disembodied, you know, and we're putting our own biases into that equipment because we haven't actually explored our own biases as people, you know, we, we, we our own uh, self-awareness. So 
I think what you're saying is uh, is uh, very important. I think what you mentioned, Amaranta, is really uh, another point is that we need to learn more about ourselves. Yeah. Because the data is being collected uh, aggressively mm -hmm. and about us, about our behavior, and we kind of not aware of what, like, what are we, who are we? <laughs> <You> yeah. <know? laughs> yeah. And uh, I, I, I remember there was another experiment. I don't remember which one were two bots. I think it was Google. They, are, uh, they had two bots talking to each other, and okay. at some point they become like uh, really negative, and they start being I don't remember was the, there was there was some like hatred between bots, yeah. but the bots they learn from how we speak, right? Exactly. We they only get they got fed uh, our experiences, our right. behavior. And we need to be more aware of where we are so then we can create the experience of the future, which is not what they are today. <laughs> so that, and I think that's another uh, point in, um, in agile transformation, in digital transformation, is that uh, bigger awareness and like psychology of human behavior or social behavior is something that should be uh, um, also being taught. And I think what uh, Rachel mentioned about like fundamental knowledge of like uh, testing, but I think fundamental knowledge of psychology is also becoming something that's necessary. Even though before it was kind of a coaches, it was just for coaches, like they need to know like, or like for manager, the team building is like what psychology behind it. But I think everybody needs to know about like what to expect from us humans in order to build the uh, tools of the future. So yes, yeah. we, we have to be uh, educated on that too. What we call agile uh, nowadays is just what we say, how to deal with complexity in the, in the, in the connected world. So one of the big shifts of agile came from uh, people like um, Dave Snowden, explaining how complex systems are behaving. So it's uh, what we call agile is sense making. Is, uh, so when, you, when Amarato uh, uh, say he's a Buddhist monk who is getting the Buddhist monk, for me it's just sense because we're playing the same thing. And if you have robots shifting away from the people, all the transactional world, it is not really value making for anyone, even for yourself you will have more time to think about what does it make sense for me to be here? And, and you have these points. This is, uh, this is an evidence is getting out that you have to think about sense making. So if you make an agile transformation and you're just telling people, oh, that's a methodology, you have to use it. So you become so cool and agile and you will make your life better but you have to pass your life four hours in, a, in, your, in your life in a traffic jam for that. Uh, that's just stupid, right? And so you have to understand, it's about linking people together. So personally, I see the matching point with you and even with what you're saying, guys, in, in the group. Can we ask Isabella, do you have a question? So Isabella, I know, come on. Sorry, I was on mute. No, I don't have a question. The, the whole conversation is very, very interesting to me. I'm, I came from Brazil and right now I'm working in Canada and I see the same problems in different teams and different cultures. The, the lack of uh, reaching for more quality, doesn't matter if it is in the code or in testing. So it is something that we need to have more conversations about it but I still don't have the silver bullet for that. So I'm looking for, thank you for all the, the thoughts and ideas here. Thank you, Isabel. I don't think there is a silver bullet. <laughs> no, it's constant not. work. I heard someone say, maybe we just kill them all. <laughs> but can I be rude here? It's not, a, it's not a, pr a problem of bullets. It's a problem of balls and bollocks. <laughs> <laughs> And the internal, external, I don't care is, yeah. is yeah, it's about to be, to test it. You're going to see you're getting online now. I'm sure you get a question. You are mute. Jürgen, you're on mute. 
Jürgen, you're still on mute. Yep. Yes. Sorry. Uh, thanks a lot. Uh, I, I was just uh, trying to avoid background noise. Thanks a lot, Anna, uh, for your presentation. I really like the overview. Um, the, we're we're a little bit, uh, how to say, on this uh, top level hovering thing. I'm I'm uh, really used to, how to say, drill things down uh, to very concrete uh, things. And, and uh, Pierre, I, I've been working a lot with SAP. I've been uh, uh, responsible for some big SAP projects, but also for small other projects. Um, usually those SAP projects are non-agile uh, in, in the real sense of the world. They're very, very traditional uh, in that company. Um, the, the, the behavioral part is really a huge part, especially uh, if you're trying to take uh, projects agile and um, we've been nailing this down even in the development environment with SAP to a factor four improvement in terms of quality and throughput. Um, actually I was missing a little bit uh, you know concrete approaches um, how to um, to address quality my, one of my uh, learnings is um, if there is nobody really, how to say, demanding quality, and be that in all dimensions, be it in, in terms of the testing, be that in terms of how people interact with each other, uh, in terms of how the software is documented, in terms of how requirements are handed over uh, and, and all the interaction in that, in that phase, um, that, that is more a, a total approach that is required. You also, Rachel, you, you differentiated uh, between uh, quality assurance and uh, QA, QS. And uh, I, I have a, a more generic uh, quality understanding in general. I've, coming from, from the background of the automotive industry, um, I've been looking with traditional automotive industry technologies at how software people and how IT people behave. And that's interesting um, how, let's say, how huge the, the improvement can be if you just uh, apply very, very simple things like uh, the, the AD method, which sounds very conservative, like asking what did really go wrong? Have we understood the problem? And this is all, this is all happening after the problem has already happened. But you take the learnings normally going forward um, in this environment. And we've applied this, this quality approach to even very simple things like somebody unplugged a, a network component somewhere and the network was down. What went wrong and, and so on. So that helps quite a bit um, and can be completely applied also to testing and all these other environments. So that was not a question. There was just a statement. Sorry for that. I'm still learning with that meetup uh, environment. I'm, I'm kind of, how to say, surprised how how many people uh, um, book the meetings usually and how few people really participate. I think we had something like 12 uh, in, in, the, in the highest time now. 13. 13. 14. Okay, now it's just the, the, the uh, five of us and looking at the how many people had enrolled, this was 53, I think, here, yeah, right? Yeah. But well, we're recording for them, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're recording. You cannot, you cannot always participate. Well, first of all, as I said, this is uh, in the beginning to Pierre. This is my first meeting with Zoom. I usually um, use the Google products like Hangouts and so on. I, I will have a meeting right after this one. Um, and I'm, I like the, the Zoom environment quite a bit. And I also like the fact, uh, Pierre, uh, that you're bringing us together here in, in really a global setting. Um, if using that technology, really appreciate that. Thanks. Oh, you're welcome. But uh, I, I, I love your answer, your response here, because this is a typical response I have with, in Germany. Yes. Is do you have the standards for the quality that I can use? What are the tools? Which is <laughs> don't take this personal. I'm, I'm kidding here. No, no, no that's and, uh, I'm. I'm already also working with a huge uh, SAP transformation in Hanau uh, near Frankfurt. Which, uh, so we have, we have quality managers a hell of from the UK. 
And that has nothing to do with quality at all. Is okay, uh, uh, it's a backbone for the contract. So, uh, but the thing, the challenge here, it's not about what kind of tool or method or standards you're using. It's about think of what you're doing. Is uh, be aware on what you're doing. Uh, jumping, yeah. jumping in the chocolate yeah. box, just picking out the white ones is not the solution. It's the easy one. So like if you do SAP, usually we say, oh, we're developing standards, just use the standards. And because you use the standards, Which you, is have no, you have no quality control at all because it's standard, right? In fact, it's just a mess. Yeah, exactly. I'm sure if I invite Anna to take a look with Rachel in Valdorf at SAP, she will, she, they are, she won't, she, they are running out of the company after 30 minutes. Say, what the heck are we doing here? It's not possible. Sure. <laughs> it's, so, yeah, sure. I think that we, we kind of like, it's, I'm glad that Jorgen is coming from automotive industry. I really glad because I do have samples. So, uh, number one, uh, recently Uber uh, killed the, pass uh, killed the um, pedestrian because in, um, and there was an autonomous car which could not recognize somebody jaywalking. So, uh, mm -hmm. it, and it's, I, I think if you, if you don't know, Google it, it's, it's really an interesting story in a way that, it talks about human lives and it talks about the whoever built this autonomous car and you know it's like common sense right sense making don't you know that people jaywalking right <laughs> that car didn't know it couldn't recognize the person because she was crossing in um she was crossing the road in the dark in the dark in the wrong um in not on the uh, where the pedestrian the walk is, wherever she wanted, yeah, remember. she just crossed whatever she, yeah. whenever she wanted, and the car did not recognize that it was a human being. And to me, it's a very um, human problem because we obviously did not. Whoever was testing this machine, whoever was thinking about the behavior. Uh, could kind of look around and see that there is not just rules, right? Uh, a lot of issues happen when somebody breaks the rule. In this case, the human broke the rule. It doesn't mean that we should take her life because of that, right? Mm -hmm. But the machine kind of assumed nobody fed the machine the um, cases where a human break the rule, you know, or the accident happened, or the human kind of breaks the rules, right? And to me, it's, it, this is not, um, this is, to me, it's common. Common is that uh, we do not take the whole life experiences into building the technology. And when technology is gonna interact and when technology is autonomous, autonomous and it starts interact with life, with human life, we need to be aware. We, we have to be, we humans have to make sure that this uh, technology is really ready for us. Not just we are ready for them because we're never ready. But is this technology safe for the human society? Because in that case, it obviously wasn't. And um, yeah. Sorry, sure. it's, really, it's a fascinating thing, but it, again, it, it, like in my, in my studies of AI, it's where it becomes disembodied. It's, the technology has become so disembodied because, you know, as a human, a, a human having a body, the way that we orientate around the world, you know, allows us to break the rules through our body, not just through our mind. Mm -hmm. We have it inbuilt in us to pull away or, you know, all of that. And we, we haven't really put that in the technology yet. We've, we've assumed artificial intelligence just to be knowledge. But, uh, it's not. <laughs> it's not, no. And uh, the, the, where I was studying actually moved towards artificial life and, you know, uh, road, in, a, in a way, embodiment. So I think it's a, it's a very good example. That's a lovely I, introduction. Uh, I, I have a question to test if, Anna, you're, if you're human. 
Are you ready for 15 of my questions? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I am. I wanted to just, I, I just want to mention to Jorgen because he asked it for some guidelines. So, um, no, no, the, the, uh, and, not, the, and, and I'm maybe sorry to interrupt here. That's okay. Um, let, let me, let me maybe explain. I, I, my perception actually from, from my professional past so far is in general, software development and quality is worlds apart so far. There are some people that think uh, that testing has to do with quality or interaction has to do with quality or whatever. I fully, I would say, like your, your approach and that, yet that you say the quality approach must be a much bigger picture there. Uh, it's not only about uh, testing, it's, it's much, much more. I fully agree. My message uh, or my question was another one. Um, how can we bridge the gap between uh, how to say your demand that you've been verbalizing and that I like very much that you say, well, software as a technology, AI should be able to deal with us as, as human beings while we're still at such a super low level in terms of, uh, let's say, quality basics, how we develop software. And, and if I look, you know, if I look at those guys doing manufacturing in our environment, in automotive, they're really crazy about uh, quality. If I look at the same automotive company, at the software development guys, you have the feeling, and this is for sure what happened also for the Uber guys, you have the feeling that they're just starting to walk, learning to walk. So they're far away in, in their attitude, in their interaction uh, from, from any kind of generic quality approach. That, that was my message. And um, yeah, I think, uh, so, oh, the, the developments are happening and, uh, for example, uh, MIT professor John Thomas, he was a keynote at our, um, last year conference and he was talking about the models that they built. So they have, um, he has the, he's the, oh, he had, he had in the lab on, um, uh, something like that. And it's MIT professor, which means that they use science. They build in the models uh, to um, calculate the risks. The, and he introduced to our, it's called STAP, I, I believe. And I, I should not say I can send around uh, some of his work so you understand like what he's talking about. But some of that, um, scientific development of those risk uh, introduced like um, calculating the risks of what could happen between in the interaction between human and uh, technology is something that they've been uh, actively researching so it is happening and uh, i can send around it's maybe not the guidelines that we can use but it's something to be aware of because they use the system thinking in building those risk models okay. between humans and technology. In, in the sense of Pierre, this would be, how to say, a, a, a piece of method risk analysis. Yeah. yeah. Or maybe if you, if you want to share it is you can use the meetup group. Yeah. And I so will. you have all mm -hmm. the attendees, give just a link. Okay. That would be nice. All right. Yeah. Okay. I will. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay, I'm ready for your questions. You're ready for my, my bloody questions. <laughs> my God. Okay. This is the, the, the Proust, Marcel Proust questionnaire. Uh, and I picked this idea from a very uh, uh, well-known um, um, uh, television um, um, event. Um, and it was very, very fun. So question number one, Anna. What is your idea of perfect happiness? Uh, satisfaction. <laughs> satisfaction <laughs> with something that I do. Okay. Something that is coming from idea to successful uh, happening. Something that you envision <coughs> and it, it happened. Okay, lovely. Question number two, what is your greatest fear? Oh, um, it's interesting because I went through life-changing event. I had like a near-death experience um, last year. Um, and um, 
I had a very heavy surgery, so I had the time to think about that. And my biggest fear was to not finish the project that I started. It's not about your daughter. It's not about your the kids. Oh. No. 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 <laughs> but I really, I really can understand what you're saying. I, uh, you know, I, I, you know, I went through all my relationship. I say goodbye to my parents in my heart. I say goodbye to my daughter. But those projects that I started, and I was so mad that I couldn't finish them. Uh -huh. And I think that pulled me out of the situation. But otherwise, yeah. Yeah, I really get you. Yeah. What is the trait you most deplore in yourself? That's something that you don't like about yourself. I don't know what this word meaning. What I don't like about myself? Yeah. Is that what it is? Uncertainty in making decisions. Mm -hmm. Good. What is the trait you most deplore in others oh um satisfied with the status quo not willing to learn and develop good one i'm not making this up no, I, like <laughs> I, it. I, like it. I wasn't prepared for that no it's it's, it's different it's uh, it's a question that makes us human uh, um, which uh, living person do you most admire? I don't have one person I admire. <laughs> I admire a lot of people for different things. And I believe that all of us kind of together make an admirable society of people <laughs> that we live in the North right now. Mm -hmm. It's the contribution. Mm -hmm. It's what not one person. What is your greatest extravagance? What do you mean? <laughs> What's extravagance? Like crazy quality? Eccentricity, if you prefer. Ah, um, I guess uh, I'm a spontaneous travel person. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I kind of jump on a plane and I don't know where it's going to end. <laughs> and I try to go to the places that I never went. Even when I'm like transferring between the different um, like legs of a trip, and I try to choose places that I never been, so I go and explore. I really I feel it's part of my experience, human experience as well. That's lovely. <laughs> what is your current state of mind? Ah. Uh, I'm in, you know, I'm by the sea. I'm on a beach right now. So <laughs> my, I, I guess, like, um, I'm prepping to build something out of my community. I want to build a stronger community and to give more people opportunities to uh, develop. And uh, what I'm, what I have been done so far, I think it's going to this goal. Because I'm trying to um, give people more opportunities for career development. And sometimes in your uh, organization, it's not possible. And this is how I became a speaker. And I gave a platform to a lot of speakers, uh, new speakers. I kind of encouraged them to talk at the conferences so i kind of i can praise myself on that but i think that we can do more and i think that uh, professional societies is the um way of organizing uh of a talent in the future i think we need to build stronger societies that we can exchange ideas and let uh, like each other kind of develop i don't think it has to be your manager job anymore I think it should be a community job to develop people. So that's what I'm envisioning right now. Great. What do you consider the most overrated virtue? <laughs> overrated virtue. Righteousness. Okay. <laughs> On what occasion do you lie? Oh, <laughs> many. 
I'll, I'll lie about deadlines. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think it's over promising, <laughs> but I keep on lying about that. I'm lying just on on uh, on Santa. I was <laughs> Santa is coming on Christmas. <laughs> Do you most dislike about your appearance? Mine. Yeah. Age. Age. Welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Which living person you most despise? Living person. Living person. I'm not judgmental. <laughs> I, I don't have hatred toward a person. I sometimes I have hatred toward certain ideas, but not single person. Because people are very flexible; they can change easily. You know. It can start with B. <laughs> <laughs> you lovely, very friendly person, man. <laughs> it's a pleasure knowing you. Okay, but not with me. It's B, like Boris. Or like oh, uh, <laughs> no <laughs> not me um, I'm a stupid guy I love to my position so what is the <laughs> what is the quality you most like in a man um, confidence what is the quality you most like in a woman friendliness which words or phrases do you most overuse? I think. <laughs> and the last one. What or who is the greatest love of your life? Uh, whatever I do, my work. Good. So I'm done with my questionnaire. Oh man. <laughs> so waited, challenging question. I waited 20 years to be able to come with that questionnaire because I always have it in my mind. And it, okay. it's only a bad ass coach can bring such questionnaires. That's what you do, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Put people in a hot seat. <laughs> no, it's connecting you and human being. <laughs> <laughs> and Silvana, what do you think? You came late. We missed you. Yes, I came in late because I just made it home. And I thought, ah, I'll check in anyway. Um, Welcome. <laughs> I, miss the, I miss the bulk of what you were talking about. But it's recorded. I'm going very making fastly available on the YouTube channel. Sure. I'd be happy to check the recording and are you in a bookstore there's lots of books behind you yeah i'm cheating i'm <laughs> cheating as i try to be you know uh, a smart guy because usually you have the coaches that have all these books and i was looking for a picture to, to i think change i go in now in, in another space okay so it's just a background picture got it yeah yes. but I'll, I'll prefer this one you know oh my Very god nice. Oh, See, that's the yeah, technology, huh? Like this. Oh, oh okay. that's nice. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> but okay, this is how you can use, but I can hide. Uh, okay, I have to be honest, I have to be transparent. So, this is the on virtual background. My kitchen. <laughs> but this is much more lovelier. Okay, I hope you liked it. Yes. Uh, just checking around. So we have a couple of others, a new uh, session coming up. So they're very good agenda this year. I'm, I'm making it bad, not that bad. So the next one will be GB Rainsberger. Oh, wow. Yeah. Have yeah, fun. <laughs> yeah, it's fun. And then we have, so he is more about, he's a coder. He's for Toronto. So very a neighbor of Rachel from the other side of the of the border, uh, of, the, of the lake, on the other side of the lake, and he, and and he's I, I like him because he's thinking a little bit differently, and 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 we have a lot of people coming from the clean language area, 
which I, I, I want to bridge it with our communities. And when you say agile praxis, so praxis means coming from Aristotle, means what to do and what moment in time. It's not the clinic. And agile means just new work. So it's all the, all, all the kind of things we are, we are facing today in 21st century work. And feel, if you want to talk again, you're all invited. Anyone is invited here. If you want to have a topic to test and come over, I'm really, really happy and very thrilled to invite you to come here. That's our platform, right? Is to speak out. And because it's recorded, sometimes we are looking with my teams, we are looking to share some knowledge and knowledge for people having a different interpretation. So my way to understand Aja means we all know how the music is written. I'm looking how your interpretation is as a musician. Much. I think it's, can I, can I, my last words um, okay. about the quality, because the quality is like agile. The quality is then in the eyes of stakeholders. And in order to understand what the quality means, for example, for your customers, uh, do kind of put yourself in their shoes in order to understand what quality means for the C-level people, put themselves in, like yourself in their shoes. And then you see the multiple faucets of this quality. And it's not one thing, it's, uh, it's multidimensional. So I encourage teams when they think about quality and like how to start thinking about quality, uh, list your stakeholders and your team members are and your operations team and your business team and uh, the, uh, the customers, the clients, they might be two different people and um, your InfoSec team and um, definitely your business and your technology teams and your operations and um, client support. All of them have different definitions of quality. And if you collect all of them, and I encourage people to do it as a team and as a first step in kind of understanding what you're gonna deal with and how to address those quality concerns for all those different stakeholders. And then you're gonna discover things, I, I swear you will. It's really interesting. Yeah. Uh, in, in, in that way, I have uh, one, I will mention something, a, a, a guy is called Peter Kruse is a German uh, uh, researcher and, and on complex systems. He explained the a complex system is a network of people interacting together and all the interaction is based on negotiation, handling. Means it's a handling in a way of win-win. Meaning if you do software development or any kind of engineering, on one hand you have an engineering win but on the other hand, you should have a quality win too. Our job is to keep the balance. My job is keeping the balance in the system. Then you see it completely different. It's all about checks and balances.